Well, give me specifics. Okay. That's uh, just saying that you as my just pastor. Just don't swear. <laughs> Okay, so... Because this might be helpful to people. Yeah, okay. yeah, No, I, that was great. So as a committed married couple, I mean, I think I, what I would love to even discuss um, with this question is... You would love to discuss? I would love this. Are these your questions, Sean? Okay. You know, my middle name is Stephen, actually. Uh, so... <laughs> my wife's going to hate this. So... I'm kidding. There's a married... As a committed married couple, I think we have two sides of a coin here. We have a porn culture and we have a purity culture. We have a porn culture who are people who have grown up in a hypersexualized state who see, you know, all of these, you know, my, my, I think of this question my wife uh, read in, in this book today, actually, as we were talking about this, is that most children actually see uh, how to perform anal sex before they even had their first kiss because of just the hyper, like, sexualization of our porn culture. Then you have the purity culture who's like, it's procreation only, and you only do vaginal intercourse, you know. And so there's things like oral sex, anal sex, there's, um, there's foreplay, there's different types of stimulation. But then you get even farther down the line into more like role play fantasy. You get into, you get into bondage, you get into throuples, you get into threesomes, you get into, I mean, I have so many more things here that I could say. <laughs> And I have some hot sauce we can try, too, while we're talking no about wonder, it. No so. wonder, Natasha. Okay. Okay, I got it. I got it. Do you, did okay. you understand what I'm talking about now? Okay, Great. so let's start with the Word of God, okay? Yeah. You, <laughs> whew, it's getting hot in here. I, okay. Yeah. I specifically didn't wear a jacket today. <laughs> Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 13 says, Let marriage be held in honor among all. And let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Keep your life free. Okay, so here, here's the reality in marriage, is that within marriage, marriage is, uh, we need to define this, and we're talking about marriage between one man and one woman. Okay, um, that is marriage, that's God's definition of marriage, that's, every, everything else is man's uh, counterfeit, but God's definition of marriage is one man, one woman, for life in covenant together. And in that covenant, God says the marriage bed is undefiled. That's that's both a prescriptive and a descriptive revelation. It's descriptive because what God is saying is that within the confines of marriage, uh, in the context of covenant intimacy, as long as there is. Uh, as long as there is agreement between a husband and a wife that it, that it is mutual and that it is agreed upon and it is not injurious uh, to the physical body or it's not coercive, uh, then you're free, to, you're free to move about the cabin. I mean... Um, <clears throat> Um, I'm going to use that one. Free the, to move. Okay. Uh, you don't get to bring other people into that. Threesomes are a violation of the marriage bed. Orgies, uh, you know, and that's a biblical word, by the way. Romans 13 talks about that. And Peter talks about that. He says that that's the way the Gentiles live. We're not involved in, in that. Bringing... Uh, sexual impurity into the bedroom, which is would be things like pornography, bringing that in to the marriage bed. That is that is defiling the marriage bed because even though it's not somebody else coming in, it's actually a fantasy about somebody else, uh, and it's it's a defiling. And listen, most of what we're struggling with in our culture is that we have a culture that before Jesus, a lot of us have been discipled by a porn culture. And so we've seen a lot, like you said, kids, now it's, now it's on these devices. I mean, kids are seeing things that they, we would have never seen. I mean, when I was a kid, my, uh, before my dad got saved, he had a Playboy, you know, in a penthouse magazine and neighbor kids and were eight years old were sneaking around looking at that. You know, those images that you, that you see even as a child get stuck in your mind and begin to form and shape your view of sexuality. And when we import that into our marriage relationship, what we're doing sometimes, remember I said it's both prescriptive and descriptive. 
God says that the marriage bed is undefiled. In other words, it's, it's beautiful. There's nothing dirty about it. You can enjoy one another. The book of Song of Solomon is all metaphorical and allegorical about a husband and a wife. And if you were a Jewish kid, you weren't allowed to read Song of Solomon until you were much older because it talks about oral sex and it talks about descriptive of different parts of the body of the husband and the wife and how they enjoy one another. God says that that's beautiful, but it's also uh, prescriptive because God is saying, don't bring anything defiling into the marriage. So when there's coercion, like you're making your spouse do something, or there's fantasies about somebody outside of your husband or outside of your wife, uh, those are things that actually defile it. It needs, to be, it needs to be intimate, it needs to be beautiful, it needs to be pure. Uh, I know that there's a huge culture of bondage and uh, you know, whips and stuff like that, and, and that, that stuff is injurious. That stuff is not based on the beauty of marriage. That is actually imported out of our culture, and we need, we need to not do that. I mean, it's, there, we need to leave the stuff in the world in the world, and we need to embrace what God has given to us, uh, which is beautiful and is intimate in our marriage relationship. On the other side, the purity culture, some people were born into the church, and you know, we're told all sex is bad, and it's dirty, and you, you know, the only, okay, I'm, Here we go. This isn't live stream. All you can ever do is the missionary position because that's the only Christian position. Uh, You know, or you can only have sex for procreation and you should just close your eyes and get it over with and not enjoy it and uh, just suffer for Jesus. And that's not God's design. Do we really think God's in heaven looking at us after he created marriage and he created sex? in the confines of marriage, and do we really think God's in heaven going, what are they (laughs) doing? Jesus, did you know they were gonna do? Close your eyes, Gabriel. We don't need to see this. Wow. Do we? No, God said that he created them, male and female, and they were naked and they were not ashamed. So there should not be any shame, but there needs to be mutual agreement. We don't coerce. We're not injuring, we're not taking advantage of, uh, there has to be mutual consent. And Paul says in 1 Corinthians, to husbands and, and wives, he says, do not withhold from one another. But if you do, for a mutual time of mutual consent, so that you can give yourself to prayer. So how long should you be apart sexually? Well, how long can you fast? I mean, uh, we, need, we need to have an ongoing sexual relationship because it bonds. The Bible says that when you have sex, it's not recreational. It's actually body, soul, and spirit. You become one with that person. That's the beauty of sex in the context of marriage. And so uh, I think that kind of answers that. That's enough for now. I think. Can we move on? All right. 